Today I want to share with you how to render beef fat to make tallow. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now, the first thing I want to mention is in the description underneath this video, I will have timestamps. So be sure to check that and then you can jump around to what you want to watch. Because in the beginning of this video, I'm going to go over a detailed explanation about what the difference is between tallow and suet and what the benefits of tallow are. Well, first of all, what is tallow? Tallow is rendered suet. Well, what's suet? Suet is the fat that surrounds the internal organs of a cow. And the best suet is the fat that surrounds the kidneys of the cow. Suet is very rich in vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, vitamin B1, as well as a host of minerals, including selenium and choline. And when rendered into tallow, it introduces wonderful nutrition into our cooking and something we definitely want to have in our traditional foods kitchen. And speaking of cooking, tallow has a smoke point of 420 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. So it's wonderful for pan frying, sauteing, as well as deep frying. And best of all, it's very easy to render suet and turn it into tallow. Now what if you can't find suet? Don't worry, you can still make a form of beef fat that's very rich in nutrients and perfect for cooking. You can ask your butcher to give you the trimmings that he's removed from various roasts that they sell at the grocery store or at your local farmer's market. What that fat is, is fat from the muscle meat of the animal. Now it's still rich in nutrients, not as rich as suet, but it's still rich in nutrients and it's wonderful for cooking with. So if that's all that you can find, definitely use that. Now both forms of fat, whether it's fat that's been removed from the muscle meat of the animal or whether it's specifically suet, are very shelf stable. Beef fat that's been rendered from the fat that's been removed from the muscle meat will be a little softer at room temperature, whereas Beef tallow, specifically tallow, that's been rendered from suet will be very hard at room temperature. But both have a great shelf life and should last at room temperature as long as they're in a nice airtight container for about a year or longer. Now if you open the description under this video, there'll be a link to the recipe that'll take you over to my website, marysnest.com, same name as my YouTube channel. And in that recipe, I will explain how to render the fat if you're using fat that's been removed from muscle meat or how to render fat if you're starting with suet. Now what I've got here is a five pound package of suet and this is suet that's been removed from around the kidneys of a cow. Now this has been run through a bit of a meat grinder. Now you don't need to worry about this if the suet that you've purchased is just a big chunk. The only difference is you'll want to take that big chunk and you're going to want to cut it up into about one inch cubes. You don't need to chop it real fine. You don't need to run it through a food processor. None of that is necessary. Just cut it into, you know, fairly good sized chunks. Now, depending on how much suet you have or how much fat trimmings you have from muscle meat will determine what size Dutch oven you want to use. Now you can also use a saucepan as well. You just want to make sure that it's a heavyweight one and that you do have a lid for it. And you'll want to make sure that whatever size saucepan or Dutch oven that you use, that when you put the fat into it, it only comes up about halfway. And as you can see from this amount of suet that I have, I have a rather large enameled cast iron Dutch oven. Well now this is the easy part. Since this was run through a meat grinder, all I have to do is go ahead and dump it into my Dutch oven. If you're working with a large piece of suet, as I mentioned earlier, just cut it into about one inch cubes and go ahead and put it into your Dutch oven. And the same is true if you're using uh, fat trimmings from muscle meat. You're just going to want to make sure 
that you cut those pieces into about one inch cubes and do your best to remove as much of the meat from those trimmings as you can. So in we go right into the Dutch oven. This makes it very easy. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I'm going to go ahead and break this up. You'll see that it's very soft. All I'm going to do is just go around and loosen some of this up since it's been held together, you know, in that bag. And then this way, that'll help facilitate the whole melting process, or the rendering process. Now, the secret to doing this the right way is to do it low and slow. You have three options. As you see, I'm putting it into a Dutch oven because I'm going to do this in the oven. You can also do this on the stovetop the same way in a Dutch oven. A third way is to do it in a slow cooker. If you use a slow cooker, you want to put it on its lowest setting. If you do this on the stovetop, you also want to keep it on a low setting and you will need to babysit it a little more than if you do it in the oven. But if you do it in the oven, you want to make sure that you keep your oven temperature at 225 degrees Fahrenheit. And you do not need to add any water to this. If you needed to add water to it, that meant that you had your oven temperature too high. Because in the past, people would add water to prevent the fat from burning. But that was be simply because the temperature in the oven or on the stovetop or in the slow cooker was too high. At about 225 degrees Fahrenheit, this is going to render very nicely in the oven and it's not going to burn. Now on the stovetop, you may have this rendered after about two hours. You're going to stir it regularly. You're going to keep an eye on it and you may be able to get it done relatively quickly. In the oven or in the slow cooker, it is going to take longer. And given the amount of suet that I am starting with, this is probably going to take at least five to six hours, whether I do this in the oven or in the slow cooker. And I will have all of these directions and details for both the stovetop, the oven, and the slow cooker in the printed recipe. So be sure to check that description and just click on that and it'll take you over to the recipe. So now I'm going to put the lid on and then I'm going to pop this in the 225 degree Fahrenheit oven and I'm going to check this after one hour, see how it's doing, and give it a stir. Well, I rendered my suet for about five hours and I checked it at an hour and a half and it was coming along beautifully. And I put the lid back on, pushed it back into the oven and let it go a little longer. I checked it periodically about halfway through from that hour and a half mark and it still was doing well. And then at about five hours I checked it and it really looked good. And it also smelled wonderful. And you know, it's interesting, how do you know when your suet is perfectly rendered? And that really is something that to a certain extent uh, will come to you over time from experience. What I do is I notice how the color looks and how is the fragrance and then I'll stir it around and I'll see if the majority of the suet has rendered, in essence has dissolved and turned into the liquid tallow. Now, there may be a few pieces of suet that haven't completely rendered, but I don't worry about that. I don't try to be so exact and get every little bit of suet rendered. And the reason is I don't want my tallow to be in the oven too long just to get those few little last bits and bobs to render because I don't want the flavor of the tallow uh, to increase significantly in strength. Tallow has a lovely flavor, but you can almost, I don't know if over render is a word, but if you let it go too long, it can take on a bit of a little too much of like a gamey or a beefy flavor. It has a lovely flavor uh, that does have beef overtones, but it's not a strong flavor. So what I would recommend is 
check your tallow as you're going through the process because the time will vary depending on how much fat you're starting with, how much suet or how much fat trimmings that have come off of muscle meat. It's really going to depend on how much you have. And so you're going to want to check it at that hour and a half mark, see how it's going, continue to uh, you know, check on the aroma, check on the color. As you see, nothing was ever burning, nothing was ever sticking to the bottom of my pot. Everything was going beautifully at that 225 degree Fahrenheit mark. Now, what you'll want to do is strain this through a fine mesh strainer into a heat proof bowl. Now, to line or to not line your mesh strainer, I don't really worry about it and I don't line it. Cleaning a uh, piece of uh, flour sack towel when you've strained this liquid tallow through it can be a little bit of a challenge uh, as well as getting, getting the uh, tallow aroma out of your uh, flour sack towel. So I do use it when I make bone broth but the amount of beef fat that's in bone broth is considerably, considerably less. So this is a lot of uh, tallow you're going to see when we start to strain this. So I really find that just straining it through the mesh strainer works great. There really aren't a lot of little bits that can work their way through this. Now, I'm gonna try to do this as neatly as possible, just lifting up my pan, but you can also use a ladle if you're a little more comfortable doing that. Well, this tallow right now in its melted stage looks wonderful. And look at the glorious yellow color that this tallow has. And that's because the suet came from a cow that had been pasture raised, pasture raised on grass. So this tallow is very rich in omega-3s, which is a wonderful fatty acid for our bodies, not unlike the omega-3 that we hear about in salmon. Yes, can you believe that? Now, as to the little bits of suet and the other little bits and bobs that are left behind in here, I'm going to go ahead and cover this with my lid and put my pot back into my 225 degree Fahrenheit oven. And I'm going to let the, less, the rest of that little bit of suet a render and the other little bits to crisp up and become cracklins. But I really like to strain my tallow at this point so I have a lovely golden yellow tallow that's going to have a lovely and perfectly mild flavor that makes it very diverse for using in all sorts of cooking. Now what I like to do is take my tallow and decant it into a quart size jar. Now I'm probably going to, this is probably more than a quart, so I'm going to need multiple jars, but I'll decant it and then I will put some in my refrigerator and then what I want to keep handy for cooking, I'll keep by my stovetop. And as I had mentioned earlier, beef tallow rendered in this way is very shelf stable and can be left on your counter for at least a year. And the best thing, the best way to keep it on your counter and keep it fresh for at least a year is by making sure that you put it in some type of container that will more or less be, I don't want to say airtight, because that can sometimes be difficult to uh, create in the kitchen. But what you want to do is do your best to keep air out of your jar of tallow. Now I'm just going to use a funnel. If you have a steady hand, you may not need a funnel. And I'm going to go ahead and decant as much as I can into this quart size jar. And since my tallow is still quite warm, I've made sure that my jar is nice and warm too. That just keeps the jar safe, even though technically this is a canning jar, so it's used to uh, hot temperatures. I find that making sure that your jar is a little warm before you put a warm or hot liquid into it just can help prevent any cracks, the potential of any cracks. Now you can decant this in any size jar that you want. I did it in a quart size jar because I'll use a lot of this throughout my cooking, but if you think that you're going to use a smaller amount, you could decant it in pint size jars and just keep the pint size by your uh, stovetop and then refrigerate or freeze the rest. 
When you decant it in your jar, just leave about an inch or so headspace. So when you do refrigerate it or freeze it, uh, you allow uh, for expansion. So as I said, on the counter, uh, this can last at least a year. While this is cooling, I'm just gonna put the lid loosely on it, and then once it's cooled, I'll tighten the lid and put it by my stovetop. If you put this in the refrigerator, or even the freezer, this is gonna last a really long time. Tallow generally just doesn't go rancid. What does happen, rancid in the sense that it would have an off flavor. What does happen is it can oxidize over time and lose some of its nutrient value. But it's a wonderfully shelf stable, wonderfully nutrient dense food, and definitely something we wanna have in our traditional foods kitchens. Now I'm gonna let this cool completely and then I'm gonna show you what tallow looks like, true tallow that has been rendered from suet, what it looks like at room temperature, how hard it is. Now if you've used the fat trimmings from muscle meat, it will be softer, it will have more of a consistency of butter. But a little tip that I wanna share with you, if you're a crafter and you like to make homemade soap, or homemade candles and really be quite the pioneer, you want to use real tallow that has been rendered from suet because it will be hard and it's perfect for making soap or candles. And s s tallow that's rendered from suet is very good for using in making homemade cosmetics. And if you're interested in learning how to make face cream and foot cream from tallow. I'll be sure to link to the two videos that I have uh, where I show you how to do that. And tallow is wonderful for our skin because it's got a very similar profile to our own skin. And then you can joke as I do with my girlfriends and we all say, yes, ladies, we're putting beef fat on our faces. Since this will take some time to cool down and solidify, I wanted to show you an example of what suet looks like once it has been rendered and turned into tallow. As you'll see, it's quite solid. And as it solidifies, it will lighten in color. Now, if you'd like to learn more about nutrient-dense fats, including schmaltz, which is rendered chicken fat, and it's very delicious, be sure to click on this video over here, where I have a whole playlist all about nutrient-dense fats and how to use them. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.